Hello and welcome to Chocolate Cover Games Monthly Melt for October of 2022. We didn't do one in September. No, did a lot of revamping for the area down here. Uh, trying to switch up. Revamping is... Hey, it's better than what it was. And we're, we're, we're switching up the segments in Monthly Melt. Yeah. We'll still have the, the fives and we'll still have Off Topic. But we got rid of uh, Games Played. We're going to go back to having... Uh, Fun size takes. Uh, we're working on how to do that. I had one out a couple weeks ago. Um, that was uh, audio with just my character talking through me. Yeah. And we also switched uh, fundraising. And that's going to be... Crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing. Sorry. Crowdfunding. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever we called it. Uh, that's going to be switched out with another segment. So we have two new segments this month. So I want to hear your feedbacks on those. Yeah. We're, we're just trying things out. Um... We is we're in our basement, yep. so um, we're gonna be able to do hopefully some more videos because we don't have to travel. Um, you know, when we started this channel, we were filming at our church. Then moved to the fire and hall. Then we moved to uh, the fire department where uh, I run, and we filmed one up at Dad's one time. Yeah, so we're just now we're 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 working on an area here in our basement to film. We have an area we can play games that's designated for that. Yeah, so uh, we have a makeshift table. Yeah. Um, and, and again, so every month you'll see something new, hopefully. Um, now that my work has slowed down, sort of. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting more hours during the winter, though. Now, um, yeah, be on the ground floor of this channel. By 2024, we'll be decent. Yeah. Uh, you know, our lighting is still just a light hanging behind the camera. Yeah. Uh, so it may look like we're in a dungeon, but we're going to improve, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, it depends on if he actually does some stuff down here. Well, I'll get to it. Uh, he did help lift the, the table so we'd put some blocks under it so we can actually put our legs under the table. It was a very short table otherwise. Well, it wasn't a table to start with. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we repurposed into a table, which is actually, it's, it's really big so we can play bigger games on it. Yeah. Um. Uh, which, which takes out our big game little table idea. idea that we have, which we can still do. We'll do the reverse. Giant table little games. Yeah. Um, Butts and shies are smaller. Or those little matchstick games. I yeah. Forget what they were the called. matchbox games from like Oink and, yeah, yeah. and that sort of, you know, because we did play like Russian Railroads on a two-top mm -hmm. table. Uh, so who knows, maybe. But uh, actually having a place to film here uh, at, our, at our house will make things a little easier. We'll be able to hopefully do some more content that um, right after we play a game, we'll be able to do those fun size takes. Because uh, if you asked him if we play a game and I wait like two weeks to talk about it, I don't remember the game at all. That's true. Uh, but let's get into this month's monthly melt uh, fives. with our fives. And Tim had the, uh, the pick of categories this month. Yep. So for the, this month, to celebrate our new era, I decided to go with our top five favorite board game uh, content creators. Yep. These are people that probably do what we do much better. Well, not probably. Definitely do. Yes. Well, yeah, everybody on my yes. list does it way better than me. Yes. I should have picked someone just about our level. But uh, uh, I don't know if there is anybody. Oh, I'm there's billions of channels on well, Yeah, that's true. YouTube. Uh, but, uh, so... These are our top five favorite board game content creators. Which I guess I, I you go, go first, first because I am. So let me ask you then, because mm -hmm. uh, you were after me now for two months to do this. Yeah. Uh, one, since we didn't film last month. Yeah. But, so I have, I have nine. So I have like four honorable mentions. I know you hate that. Um, I mean, it's, it's called five stories. You're supposed to be cutthroat. It's not Sophie's choice and a plus one. She's not like, take my son, and also I'm going to keep my daughter. So when you went through and did yours, did you just go down your YouTube channels and... Because it ranks, you know, how you watch. Oh, does it? Yeah, like oh. the when you go to your subscriptions mm -hmm. or the ones you're subscribed to, the top one mm -hmm. is the one you watched, watched the most, the channel you watched the most. Mm -hmm. Is that not how you did it? No, because oh. I, I think that'd be unfair because some of these people, they, they put out shorter contents and I really like them compared to another channel well, that puts out, like, 
it's like a two hour video. And well, like, no, oh. it's not like how much like time wise. Uh -huh. It's how much you just watch a channel. Well, that's what I mean. The, like the, the smaller channel company might put out like forty videos in a month, so I'll watch all forty videos. And this other one might only put out one good two hours. So I would say, yeah, oh, okay. I've only watched them once, yeah. but I really enjoyed that two hours. Well, because in my my top five subscriptions, mm -hmm. only one is a board game channel. Uh, uh, my number two. Mm -hmm. Is a NASCAR, well, a racing channel. Mm -hmm. um, my number three, mm -hmm. I believe, is a, an autograph, uh, autograph channel. Mm -hmm. My number four, I believe, yeah, my, my number four is a NASCAR one, mm -hmm. and my number five is also it's either an autograph or NASCAR. Okay. No, my number five is uh, um, a history one, um, the history traveler guy. Okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, my top out of my top five channels that I watch, only one is a board game one, and it is my top one. Yeah. Um, no, because one of my top channels watched is one that I moderate on. Yeah. That I'm a moderator on, which doesn't deal with board games; it deals with wrestling. Yeah. But uh. So do you do you want my honorable mentions or save them for right before one? Okay, uh, but only three honorable mentions. So yep, narrow down those nine to three. Yeah, they're not nine honorable mentions. Uh -huh. Four honorable mentions. Well, kick off the fourth one then. So uh, you're number five. So my number five. Five. Um, it's technically not a. Board game channel. This list is coming off really stark. Great. Uh, but it is a gaming channel. Okay. Uh, because it's a historical miniatures gaming channel. Okay. Uh, and they are local to Pennsylvania. Okay. And it's Little Wars TV. Okay. I really thought you were going to be like, it's a mixology channel. No. Um, Little Wars TV, I I have not yet gotten to play a historical miniatures game. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one of my goals. We actually went to Historicon. Uh, this past summer uh -huh. in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, I didn't get to meet the guys, though. Uh, I did see them. They were filming a segment there. Uh -huh. um, when I walked by on the last day, we only went the last day because it was free. Um, and it was cool to walk around there. Um, and actually, we, we walked through the yard sale part of it yep. and bought board games because yep. people were selling board games cheap. It's true. Uh, the the last video that came out on this channel is the unboxing of the game you bought there, the DC Deck Builders the Rebirth. Rebirth. Yeah, I mentioned it on the video. Yeah, I got it for ten bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, I also got uh, we got Emotep yep. for like ten bucks, and um, help me out. I don't remember. The There's thing. another deck building game for fifteen that that we like. That we played once. Uh, Th Thunder Quest. Yeah, that's right. Um, now, I have played a historical miniature game. It's above your head. It's Risk. If you start off as a country that wanted to take over the world, it's technically a historical, historical miniature game. <laughs> uh, now, I'm talking like the 5 millimeter, 10 meter, 10 meter. There, there were some people playing that last day, but um, for me, Little Wars TV, I just enjoy their content mm -hmm. uh, because it's games I haven't yet played, but I'd like to. And they do hook in with uh, one of the other channels I watch, okay. which is the American Battlefield Trust, mm -hmm. uh, which is about preserving uh, historic battlefields in, in the U.S. So they, they did a Gettysburg one. Um, I think they did an Antietam one. I, I don't remember exactly. But I just enjoy Little Wars TV, and I, I hope uh, we're going to be out of town during the upcoming Fallen event mm -hmm. in Lancaster. We'll be out of town. Um, but I, I do hope to actually get to talk to those guys someday. Um, and I just enjoy watching that um, that channel. Okay. So that's my number five. Okay, my number five is... is a channel that I don't know if you watch. It's uh, Board Game Co. No. Well, I watch some here and there because he's like... Is that the guy that's like back it or not back it with the crowdsourcing, I think? Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Alex Radford. Sometimes I, I'll, I'll watch a video here and there. Uh, his channel started in December 2019. 
Did you want when these channels started? No, I, I just have that listed as information. You know, they have 43,000 subscribers and, you know, 1.5 thousand videos. Uh, so we're getting close. But, <laughs> yep. In both regards. Uh, he does a lot of collaboration work with the Quackalo people and uh, what's the other channel that he helps out with a lot? There's one other. Can't draw a blank on the name because they didn't make my list. But uh, he does, you know, like you said, the should you buy. And then he does things where he, he talks about games that he backed and then regrets backing. Yeah, I've is, watched some of those. Which is fun because I think there are a lot of people that back games and then regret backing them. Yeah. Because they, they change so much from what you back to what you get. Yeah. Kind of thing. Or, you know, you are promised this playing mechanic and you come out and it's not that mechanic anymore. Um, like, when I finally get Sweet Mess in 2024. Yeah, never. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I I don't want to say I'm going to be disappointed in it, but it's changed ownership now three different times. Yeah. And the game that I'm going to get is nothing that I backed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he has fun content in there. Um, but that's my number five, uh, Board Game Co. All right. Uh, so, we'll go back to Little Wars TV. They started in 2017. Okay. And they have 61.4 thousand subscribers. All right. That's not bad. Um, Say how many videos? Uh, should say right next to subscribers. 258 videos. Oh, I thought they would have more. So, I guess then you want my next one with that information. You don't have to. I just did that that way. Well, it, you know, I didn't really think to do it that way. And it's... Um, so, my next one is actually uh, a person. Okay. That's on a channel. Okay. Uh, I do like their channel. I don't watch it as much anymore. Right. Um, Let's see if that's the channel I have listed. So, the... And this gentleman actually used to have his own channel. Okay. So, it's Chaz Marler. Okay. From Watch It Play. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing Watch It Play might be on your list. Yep. Well, his channel was... Uh, Paradise this, Paradise. I have Watch It Play, and I have, under parenthesis, this Rodney Smith's channel, because yeah. he started it. Yep. But uh, for me, it's Chaz Marler. Uh, I liked his channel, Paradise Paradise. Um, so I'll let you talk more about Watch Play when we get to that for you. Okay. Um, but I just enjoy Chaz's um, humor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I liked his, his channel, the Paradise Paradise channel, again, because of that humor. And um, I, I just think he's fun. Yeah. Um, always has fun videos. Yeah. He, he does their tens now, I believe is his main thing on their channel. Well, his last thing was, uh, Mosaic, Mosaic. Uh, he actually did the how to play on that. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. But I, mean, I mean, like his main segments for that channel mostly now are like the, he does a bunch of the board the game top mo 10 momentums, I think is what it's called. Board game top 10 list. Yeah. Um, but I, I just enjoy uh, that, and uh, I did get to meet Chaz mm -hmm. uh, at uh, a PAX Unplugged one year mm -hmm. when he was helping out one of the, the companies. I forget which one he helps. Yeah. Um, but that's my number four. Watch it play. Uh, well, Chaz Marler, Marler. specifically yeah. on that. Um, uh, I only watch the Watch It Played ones when it's a game I need to know how to play. <laughs> uh, my... <laughs> Number four, which you might watch some of their stuff, is Quackalope. No, that's yeah. not a channel I've ever. Watched. Not a big fan of Quackalope. I don't know. I never watched it. Uh, um, Again, my my watching habits are so split between board games, autographs, mm -hmm. and historical and NASCAR. Yeah, I and mean, really NASCAR dominates. Well, board games dominate because of my one channel. Mm -hmm. NASCAR dominates because of number of channels. Maybe autographs. I don't know. Uh, so, Quackalope is my number four. I actually couldn't find the guy's name. That's the head guy. You know, I watched a bunch of his videos. I don't think he actually ever says his name, which is nice. You know, 
he's branding himself as the channel. Yeah. Uh, but it started in 2018. He has 44,000 subscribers and 1.1 thousand videos. Um, their big thing is they they read the flavor text of all this stuff. Okay. Which is what drew me into it, because most people skip over flavor text. Yeah. And people work hard on that text. Uh, they, they, they do a lot of work with, uh, the Board Game Co. channel. Yeah. Uh, they, they have a ton of crossover with them. And, uh, they, they do your standard stuff. Yeah. Uh, a lot of unboxings. They do a lot of previews. Okay. When stuff's getting sent out more than yeah. they do reviews. Yeah. So, they're, they're, they're a good channel to watch for, for things that are coming soon. Okay. More than, hey, this is what I think. All right. Uh, so I guess then my number three. Yes. So I don't think this one is on your list because you don't really watch these guys. Okay. Man versus Meeple. I'm just not a big Man versus Meeple fan. Um, I don't. I don't hate what they do. It's just I don't know. So they have. Uh, Sixty-five point two thousand subscribers, hundred and six thousand videos, okay. or one point six thousand. And they started in uh, two thousand six. Um, I think what drew me into them uh, when I was when I started watching them. Well, yeah, that uh, makes the most. Well, sense. no, like there, it was one of those things where it almost. I, I just liked their setup at that time. The the round table discussion? No, of. when I actually started watching them, it was more like, I thought it looked more like a uh, a news desk mm. type thing. Um, but I, I, I like their um, chit chat. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their round table discussion thing. Yeah. And... Um, I, I don't know. I, I just in, enjoy watching them. Uh, their their coverage of Gen Con is really good because it's in their hometown. Uh -huh. um, and they have brought on uh, some people, which I, I do think has, has really helped grow the channel. Um, it's one of those things that, for, for me... I watch their channel more for their, their chit-chat stuff mm -hmm. and, and their roundtable discussions more than anything else. Okay. Um, but, um, I don't know. I, I just, I, I really like their channel. Huh? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's <laughs> the main point of the list. You know, like, I put them on the list. I don't know. They, they made my number two for reasons. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so my number three... <laughs> which I don't believe you watch, is Before You Play. Nope. Never even heard of that channel. Uh, it's the main people on are Monique and Naveen. Um, they started in 2019. They have 47,000 subscribers and 372 videos. As of time of I made the list, they might have had more videos since then. Uh, they are mainly a playing channel where you watch them just play the games. They do okay. a bunch of other videos, but those are, that's their main bread and butter videos is them playing the games and you watching them play. Yeah. Which is nice. I, I think I learn games more better from watching people play than Rodney Smith's version of Here Are The Rules. Because I can sit here and listen to you say, Here Are The Rules, over somebody sitting there playing and me watching them play. See, I think I like Rodney Smith with the, the watch play, the Here Are The Rules. Because, like, when we play... Oh, he does a great job. Yeah. I'm not saying he But, does. like, when we play, if I'm not the person that reads the rules, mm -hmm. I don't get it as quickly. Mm -hmm. That's why when we play, I've got to read the rules. Yeah. That's why I refuse to learn reading, so you could. <laughs> That's why um, I told my teachers years ago. Though, there, there are some that, you know, I, I will watch, like, Man vs. Meeple will do, like, a, a turn one, mm -hmm. uh, where it shows how to... where they play through a turn, um... And, and there are some other channels that I will watch some limited playthrough stuff that they do. Yeah. Um, just to help get that that feel. Yeah. Well, see, the thing I like about Before You Play is mostly it's just them two playing, so everything they play is mostly 
the two player version or how yeah. two people play. Which so, works well for, for us. us. Yeah. Uh, they do a great job. Simple setup. Nothing too fancy. Uh, but yeah, that's my number three before you play. Okay. Uh, so my number two. Uh, has nineteen thousand or nineteen point two thousand subscribers, yeah. with three point five thousand videos, yeah. and they started in two thousand eleven, mm-hmm. and um, this is Rob's Tabletop World mm. with Rob Oren. Yeah, uh, again, I started watching his channel because he covered the the games I don't play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found him. Uh, with his War and Pieces segments, because he plays a lot of the war games, plays a lot of miniature games, things I don't play. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, and I, I found that fascinating to to just watch somebody. And again, that's why the Little Wars TV comes into my thing, um, because it's it's games that I, I don't play a lot, but I, I like his take on things, and he's expanded into so many other things. Where it's not just those war games, um, man. He covers he covers the gamut of things, mm-hmm. and he's though I, I think out of everybody I watch, he just seems. I mean, again, they're all war gaming in general. Everybody's very down to earth, mm-hmm. but Rob just seems like a dude I'd want to hang out with, mm-hmm. um, and not necessarily to board games. Um, Rob just seems like, uh, such a great dude and, and you know, for her, I shouldn't say seems like a, a great dude, you know, I can only say it cause, uh, I haven't met him, but just so down to earth, loves all sorts of gaming. Um, you know, he was doing the, the one soccer flicking game that looked cool. Uh, you know, he started covering some RC car stuff, um, and, and the guy's been through a lot um, with health things. Uh, I know that that his wife is is going through health things, and you want to talk about just a genuine guy who always will lay it out there to to the guys, people that watch him, and the, the amount of stuff that he has done for the board gaming community is also one of the things that drew me in. Mm-hmm. Man, he is an amazing mini painter. Um, he's donated stuff for for auctions with that, and you know everybody on this list. I I, I don't want to say people are bad people, you know, because everybody on this list, the the board gaming community as a whole is is awesome, and everybody on this list is just great people. But Rob Oren is is one of those guys that. Um, Man, I really hope I get to meet someday and just chat with him, mm-hmm. um, because uh, he's a big sports fan mm-hmm. too. So right there, um, that that that's big for me. I think him and I could talk some football. He's a Seahawks fan, mm-hmm. uh, which is to me odd, but <laughs> I don't know many Seahawks fans, but that's cool. Um, but yeah, he's a big football fan, and. So if you have not checked out Rob's channel, which um, de- definitely give it a shot, mm-hmm. get, give it a shot. Watch, watch, uh, watch some of his channel. You won't regret it. Okay, my number two, I probably assume is a crossover. All which right. is your number four, which is watch it play. <laughs> uh, I marked it as Rodney Smith's channel. Yeah. Um, started in. Uh, August of 2011, they have 294,000 subscribers and 1.6 thousand videos. Okay. Uh, the main reason I have this one so high is more or less rules explaining. You know, if I if I don't get something through watching it or I have a question about a rule, it's my go-to because I'm not gonna read rules. Yeah. It's like in case of this scenario. Okay, well I'm just gonna pull up this video. I'm not gonna get out the rule book. It's the main reason it's my number two. It yeah. saves me on reading. Anything that saves me on reading is always going to rank high in my yeah. book. That's why I rank movies higher than books. Uh, but that's my number two. And I think our number ones are not a crossover. 
Uh, I don't know. So do you do you want the my? Uh... Give your seven honorable mentions. So I have four honorable mentions. Okay. Uh, Dan King, the Game Boy Geek. Okay. Uh, I just I enjoy watching his stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Family Showdown. Okay. Uh, I think they're fun to watch. And Rado. Okay. Um, I enjoy uh, like the end of the month where he runs through all the games. Uh, I, I really watch those more so than anything else on the channel. And the last one is uh, After Further Review with okay. Steve Tower. Okay. That's the one he does a lot of the uh, Play It mm-hmm. or yeah, Play.com games. Yeah. Like the wrestling one, the History Maker Baseball. Um, I, I enjoy that. Right. So, so I'm assuming your number one then is the Brothers Murph. No, um, they they would have been an honorable mention. Right. Uh, so my my number one, and I can't pick one person. On this channel, hmm. the Dice Tower. All right. um, I know there's people that you know. Um, I don't I, I don't know. I seem to find that the Dice Tower is very. Um, Split. Yeah, like people really like them, or there are people like they're uh, I'm not a big fan of the Dice Tower. I mean, they're taking away fans from us because you can only subscribe. Yep. To, you can only subscribe to them or us. Yep, uh, and they have three hundred and ten thousand subscribers, twenty one thousand videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, joined YouTube in two thousand eight. Uh, I do find that I. My my gaming lines up with a lot of theirs, mm-hmm. um, like the family style gaming for Tom Vassell. Mm-hmm. Um, so I watch a lot of those reviews. Um, Z Garcia with a lot of two player stuff. Um, I like Mike Delicio's humor, mm-hmm. and um, I think a lot of the the new group that's in there, Chris, Wendy, uh, Camilla, they. And Roy, you know, just the the whole group. And, and if I forgot anybody on there, I apologize. Oh, they'll they'll, they'll tell you about. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, they'll come after us. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, all their contributors from from around the the world. Uh, I, I think they've done a lot for gaming. Um, and it's it's just good to watch, and they are my most watched channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, going while you were talking, I went through. Uh, my my top watch channel is uh, the Dice Tower, mm-hmm. uh, and then a NASCAR channel, uh, Out of the Groove, their He Step, then the History Underground, then the Iceberg, which is a NASCAR channel, and Mike, Michael Myers, which is an autograph channel, and then Rob's Tabletop World, back to work. So, yeah, but and Dice Tower is by far and away mm-hmm. my my most watched, and I just. I enjoy everything they put out. Okay. Now, I don't watch every video. Yeah. Because, dear Lord, that would take a lifetime. All right. So that was your number one? Yeah, that was my number one. All right. Before I get to my number one, I don't have an honorable mention, but I do have a reason for this list. And that was, uh, you know, Geek and Sundry has been putting out videos again all of a sudden. Okay. And I think that's a thing that drew a lot of people to Tabletop, because when... Uh, uh, Geek and Sundry first started, you know, they had a lot of board game content with yeah. Will Wheaton and whatnot, and then they branched out and they became more games, like uh, role-playing and whatnot. Yeah. And then they were bought out by Comcast and said, you're not making us money, this thing on the internet that wasn't making money, why did we spend money on it? Yeah. And basically shut it down. They still put out videos every now and then. It's being held down by Becca Scott, because she's doing a wonderful job. Um, but, uh... So... I'm gonna guess your number one uh-huh. is the 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 one that you went to at when we went to Gen Con. You went to their special thing. Oh, uh, Critical Role. Yeah. Nah, I, uh. I I didn't consider Critical Role uh, a board gaming channel mainly because it's just them okay. playing their role game. playing. Well, I mean, they have other videos on there talking about the game they just kind of played, but yeah. I, I, I didn't put them on my list. Right. Uh, but my number one is uh, No Rolls Barred. Uh, is it 
Adam Blompier channel. It started in 06, air quotes, because it was a different channel back then. Okay. It was like a movie reviewing channel with a different person who owned it. Okay. Then it became a wrestling channel. Then it became a talk show channel. Then it became a different board game channel, which was called Phenomen Nerds, hmm. that no one could spell. And then they changed it. So yeah. the rebranding starting date is January of 2021. That's why I would consider that channel officially starting. Okay. Even though YouTube has it all the way back in 06, when it was like several projects ago. Yeah. Uh, they have one point, or not one point, they have 116,000 subscribers and 236 videos. Uh, they do a lot, they, they do a fair mix of role-playing games and board games. They do, you know, your standard top lists. Of, yeah. Uh, they are mainly an entertainment channel more okay. than they are, like, a reviewing channel. They don't do unboxings. They don't do reviews of games. They'll do, they'll do playthroughs and... That's that's their bread and butter. Okay. It's just watching them play games. And that's that's all I want sometimes is just watching people play games. Yeah. Because that's what gaming's about is games. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that's my number one no rules bard. If there's a channel that you like to watch board game creator wise, uh, leave it down in the comment below. Yeah. Let uh, us know who you're watching. Uh, explain why it's us. Yep. I mean, really, my, my, you explain why. It's my, not... my number one really was myself. But not me. But not you. Because you pick a person on a channel. Well, I can give you our stats real quick. Our subscribers are 42, and our videos are 171. Oh, we have that many videos? Yeah, we have a ton of videos. Wow. I, you would know if you edited the, the, them. Well, I'm... I don't have time to teach you how to edit, because last time I had you edit videos, I basically stood behind you editing the video through you. You know, well, that's why I really don't do my autograph channel much anymore. Yes, because you can't edit. Well, I didn't have the time to keep up with the actual videos. I felt bad because hmm. I, I would like to get back into that. Well, this, this video has gone way too long to begin with. So yeah. let's, let's wrap it up. Uh, thank you for watching. Yeah. Please do like and subscribe. Leave comments down below, like I said. Share the video. It does help. We're getting closer to 50 viewers. And as always, stay sweet. Hello and welcome to Chocolate Covered Games uh, Monthly Melt segment for October. Uh, this one's a new segment called Voted. Yep. I put out on Facebook a couple different areas for uh, polling and the for the first month of October here. My question was best uh, October theme game slash you know scary games. Okay. Uh, we got two hundred votes in. Wow. From the reply. Uh, I wouldn't. Wow, there's there was con there was questions on this site like, what's your favorite piece in a game that got like ten thousand votes? Yeah, yeah. but two hundred's big for us. Yeah. Uh, so I have it broken down by percentage. Okay. So let's go from the bottom up. Th these games got less than one percent of the vote. Okay. There are five of them. So equals one vote. Uh, Unconscious Minds. Never played. Nope. Never heard of it. Uh, Court of Court of the Dead. Okay, I think that uh, that's the one company we like. Like Court of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. You got you got the thing that can look yeah. up. Mine's the one filming. Uh, while you're looking up Court of the Dead, uh, another one with only one vote is Monsters on Board. Okay. Uh, then Fearsome Floors. And a touch of evil to round out our one votes. Uh, can safely say we've never played any of those. Then with 1% of the vote, which is three votes apiece, uh, there was also five that got okay. that. Yeah, so Court of the Dead, it's listing Court of the Dead Mourner's Call, huh. Project Raygun, or The Op. I thought it was that other... Yep. Uh, so these are 1% with three votes. Nevermore, we've played. Yep. We own. Uh, Eldritch Horror, we've played. I've at least played. Yeah. I played the digital version. Yeah. Uh, Salem 1692. We own. But you need at least three people to play. Yeah. Uh, 
Arkham Horror 3rd Edition? Never played. I was surprised Arkham Horror came that low. So, um, Court of the Dead Dark Harvest, which came out in 2020, is Skybound. That's who I was thinking. Okay. Because Skybound was um, Druid City. Mm. That's what I was thinking. And the last <laughs> one to get 1% of the vote is Gloom. Glad to see Gloom on the list. Uh, I have not played that, but you own it. Yes. Uh, well, because you can't play with two. Yeah. Um, it is a fun game to play. At 2%. We've got six games that have ranked two percent. These have got between four and five votes. At four votes, Resident Evil deck building game. Uh, uh, four vote, Abomination. At four, a game that you've played because I've <laughs> played it when you played it. I'm pretty sure is Mysterium. Mysterium, yep, yep. And these uh, these last three games have got five votes, still in the two percent. The Bloody End. I'd like to play that. A lot of people... I'm surprised it didn't get much higher because I haven't heard a lot of people talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I'd like to play that. Dead of Winter, we've played. Played, it was okay. Yeah. I think more so that, the people we played with was yeah. what made it better for me. And then Nemesis. Nope. Which I don't think we've played. Nope. At 3% of the vote, with 6 votes apiece, we have... Well, 6 and 7 votes is 5 games. Last Night on Earth. I've seen the game. Never played it. Yeah, I don't think we played that. Uh, then My Father's Work, which nope. I was surprised wasn't higher, considering it's, it's just, newer. Yeah. yeah. Um, I maybe maybe just not enough people haven't played it yet. Yeah. Uh, Fury of Dracula played. I, I haven't. Uh, that does the flicking game. No, Fury of Dracula is one person. One versus all. Yeah. Okay. And Dracula secretly moves. He can't go over water. If he does, he gets hurt. And you can find him. Yeah. Uh, then Final Girl. Got seven votes. That's a solo game. Yep. That's impressive. It, horror, I think, works better as solo. I've yeah. Played. And uh, I'm glad that no one like started to break down which Final Girl, because I yeah. think I would have split the vote, because there's a lot of them yeah. out there. Uh, uh, seven votes. It's still at 3%. Slumbicide. Never played. It. I'm surprised it was that low. Yeah. There, there's a ton of expansion. It's, it's one of those games, if you like Slumbicide, yeah. in for the long hold. Yeah. Oh. Uh, next up, we got 4%, which is The Night Cage. Are you going through, like, all 200 games? No, 200 votes, not 200 oh. games. Like, our top game got 38 votes, oh, okay. then 25 votes. All right. It's just some of these smaller games. Yeah. I'm going through all the games. All right. It's only, I think, 23 games. Okay. Uh, but we're going to start talking about some of these bigger ones. Okay. I'm not going to waste time on the 1%. Yeah. Even though it's somebody's favorite game. Uh, the Night Cage. Didn't care for it. I liked the Night Cage. Didn't it, care for it. It, it gave Probably because the first time we played, uh, it, it's the, those tiles are so random. Yeah, well. We, 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 yeah, I just, I don't know. I just didn't like it. But that was that two player. Yeah. I, 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 I liked it more when it was at the max when I played it. Because even though we lost at the very end, I think I found a, a strat that worked out best for me. And I was just constantly falling into the abyss. Hmm. When there was nothing that was good for me, yeah. I just kept going over the same tile until I just fell into the ground and hmm. started in a new lair. Uh, but the Night Cage with nine votes, pretty good showing. Uh, number, well, not number, at 5% okay. with 11 votes, uh, Blood on the Clock Tower. Which... It's, it's a new game. I've... Yes. Yeah, it's, it's the thing that they say is going to take over uh, Werewolf. Okay. Which I think is true because Werewolf didn't make this list. No one wrote it in. Hmm. No one wrote in uh, Werewolf or Ultimate Werewolf. So I thought, man, Werewolf is going to get a ton of votes. But no. Okay. Uh, but once again, that's one of those games where it's a big group kind of thing. Yeah. If you're not running with a big group, you're not playing it. Uh, but still, for a brand new game that's a party game, good showing. At 7%, Arkham Horror, the card game. Didn't care for it. Did I play it with you? Yes. I'm trying to remember it. Yeah, we played it. Is that the one... No, it's not the one with the houses. That's the... Uh... That's the... Uh... No. Betrayal, House of the Hill. Yeah. Um, 
I just don't remember it. Too yeah. Much. Uh, but that's a 7% with 15 vote. Then we come to our last three, which ramp up here with 11%. Okay. Horrified. Which version or just in general? Just horrified. Yeah. The, we, the horrified franchise. Yeah, we, have, we have the Universal Monster ones. I like it. I, I do like it. I'd like to play with more than just us, too. I mean, if somebody would have put down, like, horrified Universal Monster yeah. and I would have got, like, 1%, I would just group it with yeah. the other thing. Um, yeah, because there's Universal Monsters and American Monsters. Yeah. I don't know if there's ever going to be a third one. They could. I mean, there's monsters all over the world. Yeah, world monsters. You could do South America monsters. Eastern Europe monsters, sea monsters. You could do a sea one where you're in like yeah. a sub. That'd be fun. Or on a uh, cruiser. Yeah. You know, there, there's there's places they can take it. And Is good... there a difference between the two really other than the monsters? Probably. There might be small life improvement changes in the I game. I don't know. But, uh, you know. Well, each monster plays different, so yeah. maybe maybe those five monsters... Yeah, I mean, the board play. looks the same. Yeah. But yeah, probably the way the monster, monster plays play, and what you need to do to beat them, yeah. Uh, but that that came in at 11%. They're, they're uh, runner-up okay. for the winner for this month at 12%. Runner-up for the winner, is that what you said? Runner-up for the winner. Is that not what a runner-up is? <laughs> okay. How would you say? Just runner-up. Of the winner. Is... Mansions of Madness. Now, is that the same as Mountains of Madness? No. Mansions of Madness is... Did we play Mansions of Madness? No, we played Mountain. Well, I'm trying to think if I ever played Mansions. I don't think. I, I th never have. I think I played it in that group there at the church across from the, the place, at the Life Point Church. Yeah, I don't know. I never played it. When we played in the basement. Yeah, I don't know. Because I think that's where you're going all over, like, putting out small little paranormals. You're investigating. Yeah. Collecting weapons, tools, information, solving complex puzzles, fighting monsters, sanity, and death. It's a co-op game. Mm. Uh, but that that came in with twenty five votes. Okay, and our our big winner for the month of October for voted at nineteen percent. Betrayal on House of the Hill, which I've played. I have it. I played the Scooby Doo version. Yeah, it plays the same way. Yeah. I like the Scooby Doo version because it was Scooby Doo. Yeah, it's not a game for me. I mean, it's fun, but yeah, both times I've played Betrayal on House of the Hill, I always end up being the betrayer. Which I hate because it's more reading for me because you got to go off on your own. You got a booklet. You're like, all right, let me read these six pages of what yeah. I need to do. So do, out of all the games on that list, do you have a favorite? Well, oh, Gloom. I haven't played Gloom. His mine would be uh, Horrified. Yeah. I mean, it might be the only one I really played. Well, you've played the... the Night Cage. cage. Didn't you've... like. Played Dead of Winter. It was okay. okay. You've played... Uh, betrayal. No, well, it played Scooby Doo version. I'm counting that. If somebody would put Mystery Incorporated Betrayal House of the Hell, I would put it in there. But, uh, so, no, that that's a good new segment. Um, voted. Yep. Yeah, so, so you'll put one out for November, or do you already have that one out? No, I, I'll have that out in November. Uh, November, I'm putting out there a uh, favorite uh, polyomino games. Okay. November, a lot of Tetris -y yeah. season. There, there's a lot of polyominoes, yeah, polyominoes games out there. So, um, hopefully, I get more than 200 votes. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I right. figure eventually we'll grow. Hey, that's uh, to to me, 200 is a good number, but uh, yeah, if only uh, I can get them to subscribe. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments if you voted on this list. Uh, um, what's, and what's what, your favorite game on this list? Yeah, or if it wasn't on this list. What's your favorite spooky game? Yeah. You know, if Doug would have voted, I'm sure he would have wrote, wrote in uh, Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. How did that, that make this list? I left the poll. The reason we have so many is I left the poll open so people could just keep adding. Yeah. Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunter would be 
See? My number one. <laughs> I love Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. It's a fun game. Uh, my number two might be, uh, what is it, Monster Crunch? Oh, the, the old uh, cereal <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. My, but, mine would have been uh, the game I had as a little kid. I think it's still on the shelf, Monster Mash. Where yeah. You, where you had a card that had a mix up of monsters yeah. and there was a thing you pressed and it spun. Yeah. And you had to try to make it stop and the right thing. You're like, man, no. on what I yeah. need. No, Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters is my top spooky game. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a fun new, well, I'm not going to say it's a fun new segment. You decide if it's fun <laughs> or not. I, I'm not going to be, you know, over here telling you what to think. But uh, do uh, hit the thumbs up, like the channel, ring the bell. Share uh, the video. Share yeah. the video. If you, uh have an idea for a poll that we should cover some month. Yeah. Put that in the description. Maybe uh, we'll hit that in December or later. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you for watching. As always, stay sweet. Hello and welcome to Chalk Cover Games Monthly Melt 2022. Yep. With a brand October. new... Yes. What did I say? You just said Monthly Melt 2022. Well, maybe we'll do a whole year uh, wrap up. Of October. Uh, but yeah, October 2022 with a brand new segment. Uh, it's called Backed, uh, where I'm going back in my cal catalog of games I've backed in the past, or game-related adjacent. Uh, so, starting with... The yeah, because mine would be very quick. Yeah, because you talked me... We're, really? not, we're not quite there yet, but eventually this list will be... My brother wanted this game and would not stop talking about it. <laughs> I backed it to shut him up. I, I think I backed one game. Maybe we'll have to do that one one. Okay. Maybe have one. Maybe two. And the first one on my list. So is this the very first game we backed? So it's, so it's, it's do the it first, in order. Well, yeah, that's how I'm doing it, is oh, in okay. order. Like, the very first thing I backed was Wrath Kilter. The, the band that used to go to Yeah, no, thing. I'm talking game-wise. Yeah, this is the first game thing. Uh, which was, like, five after them. Okay. So this is, like, my sixth overall thing I've ever backed. And I it, think I'm still at one. This is Seven Seas Playing Cards from Brain Vessel Creative. Hmm. Uh, these were people that were looking to start a art gallery in the area. And yep. They're so, going to have three in our area. And their thing was, we're going to raise money by making sea-based uh, card game. Or not card game, but bicycle. Playing cards. And they opened their first one, oddly enough. Near where we used to go gaming at, yeah. at the game table. We passed them to get there. Yep. Uh, and their third location... Is here in our... No, there's, that's their second. Oh, where's their third one? Oh, no. They're... they're trying to think which one they opened first. I think Hershey's was the second. Okay, so then the second one was in the town oh. we live in. Yep. And the third one is in the place we go every fall. The Pennsylvania Renaissance oh, Fair. Oh, yeah, in the, in the fair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they so actually list it as their location. Yeah. So I've backed these people to make them successful, and everywhere I basically go, they've been, which yeah. is kind of weird. Uh, the The cards are very nice. Yes, um, uh, and they they do sell the cards at the uh, fair. the fair. Yeah, uh, they're they're play they're the the decks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were very their 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 whole first run of things was nautical based. Nautical dice, nautical coins, nautical decks, okay. nautical prints. Now they've moved their art out of nautical, yeah. but you know, they, that, that, that was like their first big thing. Was, we need to go to their, their location in town here. Mm -hmm. It's too far away. I wonder if they have they, they sell their cards there. They do sell them at the fair. Yeah, they probably sell them there, yeah. too, because they're quick items that you can have on the counter yeah. to sell. Uh, but I, I think I also have a coin of theirs. Or, mm. I know I have dice as well because it came with the thing I backed. I do think the paintings are very expensive. All paintings are expensive. That's uh, what painting is. Yeah. It's how people make the livings. Yeah. Uh, but that's the f first gaming thing I backed. It's, okay. I mean, because a lot of people, when they do gaming, yeah. kickstarting things, they always throw in like decks of cards. Well, yeah, cards, that's, dice. Yeah. Tokens, knickknacks, mm -hmm. tchotchkes. Yeah. Trinkets. Trees. I'm trying to think what else like belts. Yeah. This is my D twenty belt. It spins around my pants. And wherever it lands in the belt buckle is what I roll. Dude, that would be awesome. It'd be a very useless pants if your belt can spin all the way around you. <laughs> that would be awesome. We now need to look at how to create that. It couldn't be easy. 
go up to a person that does fashion. I'm like, I'm looking for a belt that independently is away from my body and my pants that can spin while still having a well, buckle. You, you could sit there and do it. Because I was thinking if you'd have to, like, stand up. Probably. It'd be weird when you're walking, it'd just be spinning. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm very tempted to stop at the people at the Ren Fair, the leather people, and be like, could we do this? Can I make a spinning belt and explain to them that you want to spin, like, a hula hoop around your body? Because they have rings. Yeah. We need to make this now a whole fashion thing. Yep. So Does it have rings, belts, you do earrings? Spin in my earring. Yeah. Well that's our Kickstarter for twenty twenty four. Chocolate covered games D twenty belt. Yeah. Where you are the die. Well no, you could do D six you can do them all. I guess. You know, this is my D six belt. This is my D hundred belt. Percentage dice have to be suspenders. <laughs> yeah. Whoosh. I don't know how I don't know how to rotate around you this way, but <laughs> that here's my tenth. We, we will work on that for our kicks. That that'll be our own crowdsourcing project. Percentage to, for suspenders. Yes. Um, we are far away from cards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I need some spinning suspenders. Yeah. Explain that again. Freestanding suspenders that don't hold up my pants. What's not to understand? Yeah. Fashion society. <laughs> yep. Somebody's stealing our idea now. I hope they do. I'd rather see my idea made than just be my idea. And you having to put in the work to make it become a real thing? Exactly. I hope they become millionaires off of this. <laughs> yep. You know, I hope somebody at the Super Bowl halftime show wears it. I'm like, that was my idea. If you trademark it now, you can make them... Uh... I don't think you can trademark fashion. I don't know. Uh, but that was... My first back thing was Seven Seas Playing Card by Bring the Vessel Creative. Yeah. Uh, my second thing to kick off my long list of my brother going, uh, have you seen this? Have you seen this? This looks fun. Wait, we're covering two things? Covering three. Otherwise, this would be super short. Well, I mean, we need to make the segment go for like 20 years. At three things, I'm still pretty good for a while. Yes, that shows how much money you've wasted on crowdfunding. From... Uh, from my second choice of my brother constant saying, we should back this, we should back this. Have you seen this? Have you seen this? We should back it. <laughs> I never did that. Uh-huh. You'll, you'll notice there's a point where I stopped backing things you suggest. Uh, but this was early Doug complaining about games. And that's was complaining? To the point where I, I, if I wanted quiet, I had to back it. Maybe because I didn't understand how to back things. Yep. Which is why I've only backed one thing. And apparently it was so complicated. But it might be our top rated game that we've backed. I don't know. I mean, I backed Everdale. That's my favorite uh, game yeah. of all time. Uh, the second thing I ever backed was Houdini's Poutini from Force Perspective Entertainment. Okay. Not a great game. Well, we've only ever played that too. It might be better at more. Still not. <laughs> Come on. How can it not be great? It's got magic and Poutini. Mm-hmm. Or poutine. No, it's pronounced poutini. Yeah, I know. There, There is no poutine in it. There is. Yeah. There's a card called poutine. Uh, it's a card game. It's a trick-taking game. Yeah. That's, there you go. It, it's, I will say it's, it's a good example of Kickstarter. Yeah. It's a game that would never be made if it wasn't crowdfunded. Yeah, and it's a fine game. It's okay. We've only ever played it at two. There are better tricks. Because you're games. never like, hey, we got this game. Let's play it at four. Uh, for the month of November, I, I want you to do a fun size review of Fudini's Puccini. Okay, we can do that. And I said you, not me. <laughs> well, we got to play it. So I remember it better. Uh, you don't remember from way back then? I do. Yeah, you're, 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 yeah you're, you're trying to get the cards to make the trick. Uh, now you're trying to make Puccini. You, or tricks. You use your tricks on the people to sabotage their tricks while you're making poutine. I don't know you remember this. Probably because we haven't played it in the last while. I remember everything up to, to two seconds right before I was born. Yep. Memory like a steel fox. Yep. And my third thing, fact, 
Is this me again? No. Okay. This this this, this will be the outlier on the list because this is the only thing I ever backed on Indiegogo. Okay. I, I, I still have my Indiegogo thing, but I've only ever backed one thing on there back in 2015. Okay. And that is Tabletop Season 3 for yeah. Geek and Sundry, which I thought was fitting considering our top fives this month. Yeah. Uh, this happened right when uh, Comcast bought Geek and Sundry, and they, they were going to produce Tabletop because it was their most expensive show, despite being yeah. you know, their most viewed show. So Comcast is like, well, if you want to produce it, you're going to have to raise your own money. Hmm. Then they did, and then a year later, they're like, we're getting the channel. So it's a very bittersweet Kickstarter to think back yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, but... You know, table. I don't know if you ever watched any of the tabletop yeah. series. Yeah. Uh, they were always fun. Uh, I can't remember what season three had in it. I think season three was like Dread. Carpenter was that Sonic. with what's his name? Will Wheaton. Still, yeah. 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 It, it ran with Will Wheaton until the end. I don't know if there was a fourth season. I know there was talks of it, but if they crowdfunded for season three, I don't remember them crowdfunding for season four. Yeah. And we got to meet Will Wheaton. Yep. And. I think you talked to me for so long because we didn't talk board games or Star Trek. It's true. I talked hockey. I went the opposite route. I only talked board games in Star Trek. Yeah. I says, Wesley Crusher, what board games were you playing upon the, but the Enterprise? He was waiting in line for pizza in front of me. Yeah, and he didn't buy us a slice. Nope. How dare you not? And I thought about offering to buy his, and then I realized he got way more money than me. <laughs> but, oh. uh... So, yeah, that was uh, the first three things that we backed. Mm-hmm. Out of those three things, well, we got two physical things out of them. We got playing cards. Yeah. Well, the playing cards came with dice. So, out of those three, do you, do you have a favorite out of those three? Probably Tabletop Season 3, even though it's not something I physically own. Yeah. It gave me the most entertaining. Like, I can go back and watch it. Yeah. I can never go back to Houdini's Poutini. <laughs> we own the game. Can never go back to it. <laughs> yep. Uh, I've I've I have better decks of cards now. I really like the Everdeath set. Yeah. I thought. Uh, but you know, eventually this list will be getting hard to figure out which one I enjoy backing yeah. more. Uh, especially next month when all of them are your games. Really? That I backed. I doubt it. <laughs> but. Uh, let us know what you think of the new segment here. What are you backing currently on any crowdsourcing, yep. crowdfunding well, page? What games have you backed that you look back upon? Yep. Uh, and did you back any of these three? Uh, if you backed Houtini's Poutini, let us know. If you backed okay. Seven Seas Playing Card from Brain Vessel, really let us know. Yeah. That'd be more impressive. Even though they did, their Kickstarter was very successful. Yeah. But uh, so that is whatever you're calling it. Back. Uh, hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, share the video. Uh, leave the iris of the comment yep. down below. As always, stay sweet. Hello and welcome to Chalk Covered Games. Monthly Melt for October 2022. With the off topic uh, portion of the show. And for this month, I got to pick. Tim has no idea what we're talking about. Table covers. Yep. Yeah, uh, so with it being October and Halloween season, mm-hmm. uh, I believe last year we talked about Halloween candy. Mm-hmm. It's Halloween candy or costumes, I don't remember which one. I, I, no, I talked about Halloween buckets and the color coding for different kids. Yeah. Um, but I figured, you know, now this isn't a genre that either of us really watch, but horror films mm-hmm. uh, we talk about. Okay. Um, do you have any, now, I don't think you watch very many horror movies. I'm trying to think of all the horror movies I've ever watched. I've watched Ash and the Evil Dead, starring Bruce Campbell. I've seen, uh, Werewolf by Night, which is a short film on Disney Plus right now, uh, in the Marvel Universe, that's horror themed. That might be about it. I've seen Attack of the Killers, Tomatoes. Now, what about just like Halloween movies? Or eh, it's not my genre. You know, yeah. I, I I don't watch like Hocus Pocus or The Night Before Christmas. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, I need to watch that because everybody I know says that's like the greatest Halloween 
film ever. I think it's on... It should be on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. I need to watch it. Well, I, I guess, though, like, my favorite horror genre fits under that is Ghostbusters. Yeah, I would say that's a, a, a Halloween-type movie. Ghostbusters fits under that. You know. Now, you're talking the remake. I didn't hate it like other people did. Now, are we talking the first remake where it's the all-women cast, or are we talking Afterlife where it's the kids? I didn't hate any of them. Um, no, I meant as your favorite. No, the uh, first, first one. <laughs> it's not either of those two? Um, uh, if I had to, to rank them, the first, first one. Because that's the Marshmallow. Yep. And the second one is Gozer. No, uh, the second one is um, the dude in the painting. Yeah, isn't that his name? <clears throat> no. No, Gozer's the, the dude in the first one. Gozer is, yeah, in the first one. Um, the v- Vigo. V- Vigo. Mortison? No. No, v- Vigo is yeah. the one guy in this. I forget what the... Um, and three is... Was there a Ghostbuster 3? I don't remember it being a third. That was the remake. Oh. It wasn't called the third. It was just Ghostbuster again. Then you have Ghostbuster Afterlife. Yeah. I So which, which one did you like the best? Out of those four? Isn't two the one with the Statue of Liberty? Yes. And then it's two. That's where all the ooze is underground. Yes, that's two. Yeah. So they're saying Afterlife is Ghostbusters 3. That's why. Um, uh, I guess that makes sense because Ghostbusters Afterlife is a f- continuation of the first timeline. Yeah. Where the remake is the whole new timeline. Um, I didn't hate Afterlife. I actually thought it was was good. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking up something with this. Yeah. Um, so I I would say Ghostbusters is my favorite horror genre or horror genre films. Um, what was the? The because they're also like comedy. I figure you would have seen like Saw. Never seen any of the saws. Don't care to. I'm I'm not I'm not a gore guy. Um, I'm trying to remember the Disney classic channel original movie, where the dude from Coach, the assistant coach. You know who I'm talking about the big guy, voice Patrick. Yeah. Star. I forgot his name. I think the movie's called like Mummy Dad or something like that. They're like, oh no, my dad's a mummy. <laughs> I wish I could remember the name of that movie. Well, I mean, you've seen some other ones. Would you consider Back to the Future, or is that just sci-fi? That's sci-fi, that's not okay. Halloween. Adam's Family. I don't think I've ever watched it. I've seen clips. I've seen like the them putting on the play, but I don't think I've watched the movie. Mars Attacks. I have watched the movie. Didn't care for it. Do you consider that more sci-fi or horror? I consider that more sci-fi comedy. Beetlejuice. Haven't watched. Never seen Beetlejuice? Nope. I've seen clips. Like, I've seen them dance around the table. And I've seen uh, them waiting at the the Afterlife DMV kind of thing. But haven't watched. Gremlins. Haven't watched. Never watched Gremlins? Nope. I think I saw Gremlins in the theater as a little kid. I, I know some scenes from Gremlin 2 where Hulk Hogan's in the movie theater. He gets up and yells at them for destroying the movie. But that's as much as the Gremlins history I could tell you. What about Spooky Buddies? Unfortunately, no. You have not seen Spooky Buddies? Nope. I've listened to a review of it. And the movie doesn't make any sense. But yes, I've, I've listened to reviews. But like I said, I, I... The Shining? Nope. Rocky Horror Picture Show? I've seen parts. Never. I, I think I've seen the whole movie, just not in the right order. I've actually never seen it. The only thing I know is the time warp thing. Is it the song? Yeah. And they've done it enough at the Ren Fair during this time of year finale. 
I think I've seen every clip of it, but not in the right order that I could tell you what's going on. Young Frankenstein. Never seen. Hocus Pocus. Nope. Nightmare Before Christmas. Nope. Said. Haunted Mansion. Nope. Get Out. Nope. Isn't that? That's uh. Jordan Peele. Yep. Casper. Never seen. You ne- you haven't seen the Casper movie. Nope. Halloween. Nope. It. Nope. Corpse Bride. Nope. It's not a genre. If it's not a genre that you watch, you're not gonna be like, I watch some of these. Well, like I've uh, seen, th- there is a horror movie I watched that I complained the whole time through, and that's the Blair Witch Project. I, never I was, watched it. I was cheering for those children to die because they were morons. They're in Maryland, in the state of Maryland. Yeah. They're in the woods. Now, if you're lost in the woods, especially in a state like Maryland, now they come across yeah. w- water constantly. In that movie. Yeah. Follow the water. Water will lead you somewhere. It will yeah. lead you to a bigger river. Yeah, that, it will lead you to civilization. Always follow water. Yeah. That's the rule if you're lost. These morons are like, no, let's just keep going the opposite direction. At that point, I'm like, these children deserve to die. I think that's why I don't watch horror movies. Because there's the trope that the kids that are in it die because they're morons. And at that point, I'm no longer like, oh, no, I'm scared. It's like, oh, no, this kid deserves it kind of thing. So what about The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? The old Disney half movie? Any of them. I mean, you've seen the cartoon one, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was half of them because it, yeah. it was paired with uh, Mr. Toad and Frog. Or I mean, so you've seen that. What about Goosebumps? Nope. Never liked the books, didn't watch the movie. Um, so I'm just looking this up because... You know, it's a genre of movie, like I said, neither of us really watch. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going through some, some movies. Oh. Arachnophobia, I would never watch. No. Nope. Man, I would never watch. And it's not a horror movie, but it, and I'm going to include spooky movies in this. But I would never watch Arachnophobia because I don't like spiders. Nightmare Before Hollow or Nightmare Before Christmas. Apparently, I've got to see. Never watched. Beetlejuice, Never we've watched. named. Monsters, Inc. As a Halloween movie? Well, this is just spooky. But it's not and they're listing as best scary movies that won't keep kids up. I've never watched Monsters, Inc. There's probably one spooky ish scene. I mean, I watched it when I watched all the Pixar movies in order. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't classify as a. A spooky movie or scary yeah. movie? This is a movie I need to see. Frank and Weenie. I haven't seen I think that's a Tim Burton movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only Tim Burton movie I've seen was the Tim Burton Batman. Casper from the 90s, The Haunted Mansion. Nope. Caroline. I've heard good know. things, haven't watched it. That's from Arkman. Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. Is Tim Burton like the scary guy? He is. Ghost Patrol? I don't even know that. Nope. Uh, Ghostbusters? Okay. Goosebumps? Nope. Gremlins? Nope. How is that not a movie that'll keep kids up? Well, That's what this list is. Scary movies that won't keep kids up. What kid is not going to be horrified over something cute that becomes a monster? I mean, unless you buy like one of those really small fluffy dogs... Right beforehand, be like, I got you this pet. You lie to the kid telling him it's that. And be like, and the dog barks for like food at midnight and the kid freaks out. Jaws? Never understood how Jaws is like a scary horror movie. I, I would consider Jaws an action movie more than a scary movie. Little Monsters. Nope. Monster House. Nope. Box Trolls? Nope. The Goonies? Nope. Actually, never watched The Goonies. Never watched The Goonies. Paranorman? Nope. The house with a clock in the wall, in its walls? Nope. The Spiderwick Chronicles? Nope. The Wizard of Oz? As a scary movie? Maybe. This is on a list of 22 best scary movies that won't keep kids up. I, I would it con- did have the witch. It did have the flying monkeys. Mm-hmm. 
I would consider the sequel, The Return to Oz, scarier, which I've seen. Because the witch has, like, heads that she can switch out. Yeah. And it has a side character, which is a scarecrow jack-o'-lantern thing yeah. that moves really weird. I would consider that scarier than The Wizard of Oz. But what about, like, the Scooby-Doo scary movies? The, though The Wizard of Oz did get an episode of Sesame Street pulled off the air. Hmm. Because it had the Wicked Witch on. Yeah. And it was like one of the really early episodes of uh, Sesame Street. And apparently it scared kids so much that they pulled the episode. Huh. Fun little facts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, horror movies and just scary movies in general aren't something no. that, that we're into. Though, like I said, I do need to see The Nightmare Before Christmas. I would like to see Frank and we I think I'm more okay with those, like, kids movies. You don't want to see Saw and Chainsaw Massacre. Or... I'm not into... I mean, even those campy... I mean, no, you go back campy. What about, like, the Universal Monster ones? Like, Werewolf and Frankenstein. I mean, I'd watch them. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not, like, the new school horror person. Would you consider Elvira in this list? Because we have a friend that is a yeah. huge Elvira fan. Yeah. I've seen the movie. It's... Now, are we talking the, the actor, actress, or the song? Well, I meant the song. Is that you meant the song? I meant the song. The <laughs> song is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, but uh, so I, I've seen that movie. It's yeah. I don't. I think there was only ever one. You know, like I, I'm okay with like the campy like 1930s Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is a fun watch. Yeah. If, if you ever get to watch. You know, but like the the new stuff like the Sauls and the Blair Witch Projects and. Uh, the one where it's like people crawling out of a well. I think I've only ever seen one Jason movie, and that's Jason. Jason takes Manhattan, or Jason in Manhattan. <laughs> Jason takes Manhattan. I, I think it's called Jason takes Manhattan. It is such. Oh a, right, I gotta look that because that sounds like an earnest movie. Well, it it kind of is kind of the dumbest one of the franchise, and that's why I love it. It is takes Friday Manhattan. the Thirteenth Part Eight. Jason takes Manhattan. Yeah. And it's such a fun premise because, you know, you take Jason out of his normal, yeah. everybody's away. He's just in Manhattan, so there's thousands of people around, but he's dead set on killing, like, these five people. And at some point, he comes across this gang of hoodlums that, you know, he breaks their, their boombox, and they're yeah. like, hey, and they hold up, and he just turns around the mission, and they're like, oh, we're cool, and they just walk away. I'm like, you're just constantly walking by all these people, just not killing him. He's like, no. I just really want to kill these five people. And he just, he looks depressed in the movie because every time he fails to kill, he's like, <sighs> and at that point, I'm like, this movie would be like 60... Well, it apparently came out in 1989, so yeah. i got to remember at that point in time. I'm thinking, this movie would be like 60% funnier every time like he failed to kill because he's, he's like, <sighs> and there's just people walking around and he just went like, wham, and like killed a random person. I'm like, I know it's not supposed to be a funny movie, but it's shot in such a way that's yeah. hilarious. So we haven't talked about like, Child's Play with Chucky and... Never watched. Yeah, but... You know. I will say, even though I've never watched it, I hate the new Chucky. Yeah. Mainly because Chucky was such a good design. Yeah. As a scary thing. The new Chucky, they've made look so plasticky. Hmm. Which yeah. makes sense, because toys now are more plasticky. So yeah. I guess it would resonate, but... So my favorite spooky horror type genre movie is Ghostbusters. The yeah. original one. Do you have a favorite... And even though it's not, I mean, we all have, you know, I, I'm not like a, a drama love story person, but I'm sure if I had to think I'd have a favorite movie. I mean, I guess if... I mean, you're not a sports movie person, I'm sure you have a favorite sports movie. I, I guess if we're counting Oz in the list, I, the Wizard of Oz. I would go with The Return of Oz, because yeah. it's such a unique movie out of the, out of the Oz franchise. Yeah. I think people would love it. Now, do do you have a, a character in in a horror that you just think is very iconic? Is like to you when you think horror movies, who is yours? For me, I'd probably think Freddy Krueger. We even mention you know the Friday the Thirteenth series. When I think horror, oddly enough, I think heroes first. Okay, because I think of Ashley Williams, Ash. From the Evil Dead. Which I've never seen, so. Where he, you know, he has a cannon for a hand and, you know, the Necronomicon. Yeah. And he, it's a whole movie of just one-liners. Like, this is my boomstick. Or, yeah. like, shop smart, shop S-smart. 
kind of thing. But, and, you know, that's why I like it, because of the one-liners. Yeah. Uh, but I guess if you're going monster designs, probably I think they nailed it with Dracula. Dracula? Like the yeah. original? No, not Nosferatu. I'm talking, like, the Count, where, you know, mm -hmm. sharp dress, slightly high collar. So, like, the Count on Sesame Street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Be because the whole thing with, with Dracula is he's supposed to be extremely handsome. Yeah. And charming. Yeah. And that's that, that's such a great subvert for horror. So, you know, a guy we haven't talked about is like Van Helsing. Yeah. We have mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, which I did, I think I've watched Van Helsing. You know what movie I could have put on here that I watched? Lincoln Vampire Hunter. So, it's funny you brought that up. Did you hear the thing I was watching earlier today? What? So I was watching a video from... And check out the American Battlefield Trust thing. Okay. They were talking about their top Civil War movies. Mm -hmm. And the one guy said, Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. It, it, and it, I'm like, how can you put that on the list? So now I need to watch Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Everybody it, says it's a good movie. It's good as in stupid fun. Yeah. It, it's just one of those stupid fun. Like how Fast and the Furious. No one's going to be like, Fast and the Furious is a, a great franchise. But it's just... Fun. So I now need to watch Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, maybe Abe Lincoln becomes my favorite horror movie person. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. There's so many, like, subgenres of horror, you know, and I, I'm, campy. You got your classics, your campy, your gore, yeah. your suspense. Yeah. I, I would say there's your main ones. You know, like the 1930s, the horrified game monsters, I'm okay with yeah. watching. I, I just don't like the... I'm not a horror movie person. Mm. You know, which is funny. People are like, you know, that Ghostbusters fits in there. But, you so, know, I, I don't know. I watch the cartoons. Let's see. Like, with director, I would, like, I would watch a Tim Burton movie for horror. Would you never watch Nightmare it, Before Christmas? Let's... Well, if I'm going off directors, like I would watch a Tim Burton one because yeah. I know his his are creepy because they're distorted. But I would never watch like a Rob Zombie because he's a gore guy. Edward Scissorhands. Never watched. I've seen that. Do you think that's a uh, fits under this genre? Yeah, because yeah. I would say that's like a Beetle. Yeah, I, and I would watch any of the Rob Zombie, even though he just released the monsters, and people are hating it because it's it, not gore. Well, it is a big departure from what he does, but it's super campy, and it's, it's like the show where it's just joke after joke yeah. after joke after joke, and people yeah. are like, it's not what I wanted. Huh. I'm like, but that's what the show was. I'm going to have to watch that. And, I don't know, think I don't know anything. anything Rob Zombie. Uh, the only thing I know is Dragula. I like the song. That's, that's a good song. <laughs> You know, I'm not a Rob Zombie fan. I mean, he's done the Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Yeah. He's done, uh, what was it called? It was Blood Away or Blood something, know. like Boil Blood. But, no. Yeah. So, if you like um, the horror genre, or if you don't like we do, but you do uh, know something about it, you know, well, we don't really know much about it, but, you know. I'm sure there's, I, well, I'm not sure. I know there's people <laughs> that live for this genre. Oh, there are. Like, like, if this is your genre, this is your genre. Well, I had a friend in school who this was her genre movie. Yeah, there's some people that just um, love being scared. Yeah. I, you know, I, like the Awakenings and that, you know. Not my thing, but I like the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the cartoon, the, the old Disney cartoon. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I am surprised how many Disney, like, spooky movies there are. Well, but I, mean, I like family spooky. Well, they're not spooky. They're like Halloweenish movies. I mean, if you go back to like the eighties when PG was nowadays like harder rating. Yeah. Like, like uh, what the Black Cauldron from Disney. Yeah. Is spooky-ish. Yeah. You know, so I I think I fall under the family spooky more so than the the hardcore horror. I, I'm a big fan of camp. When it comes to Halloween style movies. I prefer campy where it's a bunch of cliches and tropes. Yeah. Than suspense. Yeah. But yeah, if you like uh, any horror movies, whether it's new, hardcore, Rob Zombie stuff, Tim Burton stuff. Ooh, uh, Scream. Do you ever see Scream? Nope. I've only ever watched the first Scream because it's the first time. Well, I don't know if it's the first time, but it's like the big twist where there's actually two killers. Yeah. 
Uh, I remember. Not, I just spoiled it for people. Well, Scream came out in 95? Spoiler. Too <laughs> soon. Uh, and that's the only reason I watched it. Like, even... Because it was years after it yeah. came. I knew how it was going to end, but I'm like... I was trying to figure out who was the killer at each scene. And now that... It, I think they're, like, on the seventh screen. Yeah. And it's the same thing. There's always two killers. I'm like, well, now you just ran that into yeah. the ground. But uh, let us know down in, in the comments again if you have a favorite horror movie, if you don't like the genre. Yeah. Maybe you're like me and you like the, the kitty movies yeah. uh, when it comes to that. But uh, it is that time of year for uh, that style of movie. Yeah. Hit the uh, thumbs up. Like, subscribe, sure. ring the bell, leave in the comments if there's any off topics that you'd like us to cover. Yep. Um, but again, thank you for watching. Stay sweet.